ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch us on all major cable providers and major streaming platforms. Finally, news that speaks to us. After nearly nine hours of testimony today before the Senate, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson was given a reprieve with an emotional speech by Senator Cory Booker. You faced insults here that were shocking to me. Well, actually not shocking. You are here because of that kind of love. And nobody's taken this away from me. So you got five more folk to go through. <laughs> five more of us. They're going to accuse you of this and that. Heck, in honor of your person who shares your birthday, you might be called a communist. But don't worry, my sister. Don't worry. God has got you. And how do I know that? Because you're here. Joining me now to discuss more is Brittany Cooper, professor of women's studies at Rutgers University and BNC contributor. So, Brittany, what did you make of Cory Booker's testimony? It wasn't really a question. Uh, testimony today. Yeah, look, I think that he understood that so much of this is about political theater. And he took a moment to care for the judge in a show of racial solidarity um, and certainly a show of solidarity among Democratic colleagues. Um, and it was really interesting to watch because it was disruptive on many levels. So here you have a black man and a black woman doing a thing that sometimes we do with each other in community behind closed doors. We pep each other up. We name the systems of power that beset us. Um, and then we, we tell each other, you got this you're okay, God has you, right? I like to think that they basically had church right in the middle of the Senate hearing. Um, but I also love that he was saying to her, in the midst of this space where white men are attacking you with all they have, not just white men, but by and large, these angry white men, I want you to know that both as a democratic senator in a historic position myself, and as a black man, sister, I see you and I got you. And that is incredibly important. It's politically significant and salient. We haven't ever witnessed anything like this. And largely we haven't as black people in the public because there haven't ever been this many of us in these hallowed halls in this rare air uh, to be able to support each other in that way. And I must say uh, that I was heartened to see it. It was very emotional. Uh, I, I want to ask you to just take one step back, however, and sure. just give us an analysis of what you think about so much emotion now becoming commonplace in our Supreme Court uh, nominees' hearings. Now, it's not just uh, Judge Jackson. It is Brett Kavanaugh and the choking back the tears and the, and the yelling. It is, I guess you can trace it back to at least to uh, Clarence Thomas and his kind of fiery speech uh, when he said that this was a high-tech lynching. But is this now the thing that we can expect? This is no, is it, is it no longer really an intellectual pursuit where we're just looking at precedents in judicial philosophy, but now we have to have senators like Graham storming out of the rooms and people yelling over each other, and we have to make the emotional appeal in order to make it work for TV? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that Republicans have really pioneered over the last couple of decades, yeah, and, and, and I would argue maybe even more recently than that, particularly since the Barack Obama era, I would say, they understand the political theater of it all. They understand that this is a highly visual culture. They also don't have the power to keep Katanji Brown Jackson from being confirmed. And so they are using this as a, 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 a testing ground to see what kind of messaging about her uh, and about the Democratic Party is going to stick. The Republicans do this really interesting thing, which is that no matter whether they have power or they don't, they always communicate to their base that they are fighting hard and that they have the gloves off. And because they are fighting so hard, it allows their base to remain in this kind of emotionally angry space that says that this kind of pugilism uh, and you know combativeness uh, is necessary because the Democrats are an enemy coming to take everything that the Republican base has, quote, unquote, worked so hard for. So there is absolutely a kind of political theater in it. And while we should perhaps want a more substantive kind of politics, I don't think that 
thinking about that in terms of this process is where the battle is won. The reality is that we also need in our culture for people to be able to see Black women being redeemed in this space. Because let's remember that for Black people who are my age, the enduring image of Black women being grilled in front of the Senate is Anita Hill sitting there and being demoralized as she attempts to share her experience of Clarence Thomas and her sexual harassment allegations against him. So it actually is a salve and it actually is important political repair work to 30 years later have the opportunity to see a Black woman in that space, yes, being unfairly grilled and disrespected uh, by these men in the Senate, right? But also ultimately in a position to prevail and then to ascend uh, to the high court. Given the specificity of that history, um, I think that this kind of representation is painful and hard and in many cases disingenuous. But what I want from Democrats is to learn how to actually win the battles of political theater. Uh, and in this way, I think that this is why Cory Booker matters, right? Because he allows us all a moment to sort of, ha you know, have that moment of catharsis to say, yes, we are all experiencing this as extreme disrespect. You are not imagining it. These people are absolutely showing out in a terrible way. It is not okay to do that. But in the end, we win. That kind of political theater can actually help to galvanize your base if you do it enough uh, and if you don't sink to the levels of negativity that we see from the Republican Party. Senator Amy Klobuchar asked Jackson about the importance of dissents that may over time persuade people and become the majority view. If Jackson is confirmed to the court, she's going to be part of the minority in many cases. How do you consider the power of the dissents that she may be able to issue and whether or not they will have the kind of power that Klobuchar is suggesting, that you put it on the record and someone will look back on it and realize that you were right all along? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that's important about uh, about this particular nominee is that she has a reputation for writing really long, detailed opinions. Um, so she has an intellectual case record that, for instance, Clarence Thomas did not have, never had, right? Um, and so I think that this is also Klobuchar's way of saying, you're a pro at this. You're a pro at writing the kinds of decisions that are a roadmap to the ways that we want to be thinking about issues. I think that that is a way to give a hat tip to her considerable intellect um, and the craft that she brings uh, to this kind of judicial work. Uh, and absolutely, given that she's not going to have the power to tip the balance of the court uh, in this moment, she's really going to have to have a kind of moral force, right? A kind of intellectual force. This is not a position, uh, this is a position that Black women find themselves in not infrequently, right? Where we don't necessarily have the power to change institutions, but we come in as a kind of quiet moral force and check. Now, as a Black feminist, I have all kinds of critiques of like the unfairness of that kind of labor. But I also understand that there's a long history of Black women being able to make uh, that kind of positionality work. Uh, and so I do think that those dissents are going to matter. They're going to matter because this woman is a top level jurist, um, not just sort of a showpiece for the Democratic Party. She actually is not mere symbolism. There is real considerable substance to back it up. Uh, and so, look, I also think that we're trying to pull out the, the good pieces here. We know that it's hard that we're getting a position that doesn't actually change our power relative to the court and relative to these decisions. But I do think that there's something to be excited about in the notion that even the work that she is doing, that it will not be lost to history, that it is going to matter and lay the groundwork for some of the places we might go in a different political climate. Brittany Cooper, thank you so much for joining us. As always,